play different. Greetings fellow Mac addicts. In this video we're looking at Crystal Crazy. The quest continues. This is the third crystal game and you may think it's just going to be more of the same. But you're wrong. Sort of. It is more of the same but there's also quite a few new fresh ideas thrown into the mix as well. As you can see on the title screen here it's already put more personality into the game with the uh, UF cow there. And let's have a look at the instructions. So here is the story for Crystal Crazy, and I use the term very loosely. The text in this game is very dry with its humor, whereas the imagery and audio is very surreal in its humor. Uh, so let's continue on. So I'll talk more about what we see here as I encounter them in the game. So here we have a little preview of some of the modes we'll encounter. Some of the power-ups, yes there are power-ups now. Some more uh, bonuses. And some of the enemies. Some of these will be very familiar if you played Crystal Quest or Crystal Radar before. Other ones are new to the fray. And there we are. Okay, now that we've had a sneak peek at what's to come in Crystal Crazy, let's dive in, shall we? Yes, let's shall. So here we are with level 1. And all you do is collect the crystals, much like in Crystal Quest. In fact, this is pretty much just a recreation of the first level of Crystal Quest. So we just go fly around in our little UF cow and collect the crystals, and then once we do, we can leave through the bottom here. But uh, we also control the player character with the mouse, but only their velocity, not their position. And we can shoot, and we shoot in the direction we're moving, and it's also multiplied by the speed we're moving. So moving slow, slow bullets, moving fast, fast bullets. Oh, had no bullets left. Moving fast, fast bullets. There we go. Well, that's something new to the sequel, is that you can shoot these enemy spawns so nothing comes out for a little while, which is very, very handy, because sometimes there's a crystal right here, and you don't want to go grab it and risk an enemy spawning right on top of you. That's, that's not cricket. Alrighty, once you've collected all the crystals, you head out through the gate in the bottom of the screen. <laughs> As you can hear, that sound from Crystal Quest is still in the game. So this is something new. This is a new objective. We smash the objects against the walls, like this. Take that clock. Take that cocktails. And another set of cocktails. And... Take that red wine. I would have been happy to drink all that, but... Oh well. And in this level, we have to erase the pictures, like so. It's a very satisfying. The sound combined with the motion and the look of the picture erasing is quite pleasing. One thing to note with this objective is that it's very easy to miss a couple of pixels, like here it is. Some up here, and some down here. You have to make sure we get every single pixel. We have to be pixel perfect, or if you will, picture. Perfect. I also really like the enemies in this level here. Uh, they're really harmless for the most part, but I just love their animation, how colorful they are, and the sounds of the game and the Im imagery of this game. It gives a feeling of playing a surreal cartoon arcade game. So here is a bonus level. We just need to grab as many bonuses as we can before we get crushed by the things inside. Nothing can kill you apart from being crushed. That would be a very crushing defeat indeed. So now we're back to collecting crystals with different enemies this time. So as before, the objectives repeat, but mines get added, like that thing right here, which I'm not going to touch because it will kill me. And they throw in more tougher enemies and start combining them to uh, the enemies will complement each other. These are two very basic enemies, so there's not real threat. You just kind of gather the crystals and just wander on out of here, like that. And here's another smashing rate level. See what I did there? Oop. Things get a little bit more tricky now because we're getting enemies that shoot at us. Oop, hit, 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 hit. Bam, there we go. This is also very satisfying. Smashing the uh, objects against the wall. Oh, 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 oh. I'm just going to blast everything. There we go. The bombs are back in this game. I'm in trouble with hourglass. There we go. Oh, shoot. 
So this level is very similar to the one where we erase pictures, except now we draw pictures. So here we have a lovely cat. I'm pretty sure that's Heathcliff there. Everyone's favorite cat, apart from Garfield and all the other cats. And here we have a lovely... I'm not even sure, a flower I think? Yes it is, a lovely little flower. And... Oh, I missed a pixel somewhere, there we go. So here is another new objective. This time we have to sink pool balls. But we don't really sink them, we just run over them like this. That sounds very satisfying at least. And we have to do them in the correct numerical order, so one, two, three, and so on. Like that. At the top of the screen it tells us which ball we have to collect next, which is helpful, because uh, sometimes it's hard to make out exactly which number is on the ball. And you don't get punished if you go over the, the wrong ball too early. Uh, so it's not that easy to balls up this level, if you will. This level mixes things up a little by having pictures you have to erase and also draw. Whoa, whoa, crazy. This level also shows off my most hated enemy, well, so far. Just these little buggers who catch you and then drag you into the little hole here. You have to blast your way out. They're not, you know, they don't kill you, but they're just quite annoying. And here is the final new objective where we have to put a jigsaw puzzle together. We just run over a piece to pick it up. Like so. Drag it into the right spot. And then we can pick up that and carry it over here. And it looks like we're putting a bottle of beer together. Oh, it's champagne or such. And that's all the new game modes. Here we see some true art. The bonus award screen if you get a time bonus. That is fantastic. So this is a very British game, the uh, theme is inspired by Spike Milligan and Monty Python, which is especially evident with the bonus screen that we just saw. Uh, Patrick Buckland recalled trying to explain what he had in his mind eye to the artist, uh, Stainless co-founder Neil Barden, and uh, it wasn't easy apparently. Now that is true out there, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. There's something else new to this game, is these little warps here. So you just hop in here, and just teleport you to the other side of the screen, which can save your life, and also destroy it like it just did to me then. And it looks like I've got a game over, so now we get a look at this lovely game over marquee here. Yes. This place, no one can hear you move. That was the seventh highest scoring bovine space band of all time this time. Now I just brand my name into this cow here. Now you may think it's mean, but the cow there seems to be enjoying it. Maybe it's their kink. I don't know, I'm not here to judge. And I just noticed for the very first time that the cow has six legs. I guess space bovines have six legs. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, it is quite funny, isn't it? Crystal Crest was all built around the mouse movement, and Patrick Buckland wanted to take that to a new level with Crystal Crazy. He built each objective around a different feeling of movement, such as smashing something against a wall. Like so. He wanted the players to feel like they had control over real physics objects while keeping yourself alive, a classic tug-of-war gameplay design as he describes it. In fact, Patrick Buckland went back to the origin of Crystal Crest for this level here. Crystal Quest came about because he saw how much fun people had playing with his Mac, especially when they had the eraser tool in Mac Paint and just swiped it across the screen, usually with the tongue in out. And now it's replicated here, erasing these pictures. Oh, yeah. The one word Patrick Buckland says describes the series is therapeutic. That's how he wanted the game to feel. He wanted the game to feel good when you collect crystals, uh, when you smash objects against a wall, and when you erase pictures. It's all about feeling good. Crystal Crazy also has a much smoother difficulty curve than Crystal Quest. Uh, down at the bottom here you can see that the gate is much wider than it is on the first level of Crystal Quest, and it does get smaller as the levels progress in Crystal Crazy, uh, but at least it's easier early on. 
The game also seems much more restrained with how many enemies it throws at you at one time. I mean, obviously it gets a lot crazier, uh, no pun intended, later on in the game, but the difficulty curve is, as I mentioned, quite smoother than that of Crystal Quest. Ooh, that was close. There are also power-ups. For example, here we have a rubber hat. That means I can just bounce off these. And I can bounce off mines. But enemies and their shots can still hurt me. There are also power-ups for your weapon. For example, here we have an explosive gun. So if I shoot an enemy, uh, a whole bunch of bullets will fire off from behind it and kill anything behind it. Like... Like that. Whoa, that's... <laughs> that's that's pretty wild. Some of the weapons can get quite chaotic, as you can see here, with this multi-gun. Just sending bullets all over the screen. In fact, some of the weapons can feel a little bit overpowered, including uh, some of the shields. Uh, this is a captivator. The enemies follow me around. You also may have noticed I haven't been shooting too much while playing this game. That's because I just don't feel the need to in a lot of the levels. The game feels a lot more focused on the movement and a lot less the shooting than Crystal Quest. Which isn't a bad thing, it means both of the games can stand on their own because they focus on their own different things. Uh, that said, I do kind of wish there was a pure Crystal mode or Crystal Crazy with some of the uh, improvements they made to the game, but we can't have it all. This level shows that the objectives get a little bit more complex as they go on. Uh, the balls were stationary when we first did this object, but now they move about, and also there's more of them. There's also much more enemies to deal with. It's still just a matter of carefully maneuvering around, and grabbing what you need to grab. So yes, that is Crystal Crazy, another fantastic little arcade game for the Macintosh.